representing how my two years at the Labor Institute for Brain De Development look like. So I'm going to start by saying that everything started, the history started in, I think it was February of 2022 when um, Leo was teaching a bioinformatics course back in my undergrad program. Um, and that was my very first approach to transcriptomic analysis and to differential gene expression. Um, I think it was like one week uh, of this model of the course with Leo. And in the, I remember that time he, he introduced this opportunity of a summer internship, a remote summer internship at the Leo Institute in the data science um, team. And I decided to apply it as I really enjoyed um, this very small project, transcriptomic project in my school. So I was accepted to this summer internship and I was assigned the Smoking Mouse project that became my my first project and I will say my main project in, in this institute. So, you know, everything started by understanding what the project was about and also getting to know the lab members and like more the specifications of this project, like what were the objectives, um, how was I supposed to do a differential gene expression analysis? It was like a huge transition for me uh, to move from very small school projects with toy example data sets to actually work with a real biological data that have, um, in this case, it was more than 200 samples, right? And um, thousands of genes and and exons and transcript injunctions. So it was a lot, but it was also very, a region for me to learn. And um, particularly for, for this project, you know, it was a little bit complicated at the beginning to have the whole story and all the details. As you know, there were some missing pieces of information here, but, you know, asking people that was previously involved in this and with the help of all the, the members, we we could have a puzzle in the end. Um, one first thing that I learned that was quite useful for me was uh, how to organize project repositories and code. So, um, you know, previously I had like a very naive notion of I should have a, a folder for my code or for plots, maybe data. That was the way I, I was doing it in my school. But um, it was not until I entered to this lab that I realized how important it is to have not just these specific folders, but also subfolders with the numbers and the names of sub analysis and, and um, that they must be consistent. So initially I, I did this and, you know, like many things happen in the way. And um, right now I know that it's better to have shorter scripts rather than larger ones, something that happened with this project, you know, um, but those are the types of things that you, you learn until you, you make mistakes and, and, yeah, I think this is something I will end up for all my future projects that I, I find quite useful. And then, well, um, you know, talking about this the Smoky Mouse project, the next thing was to understand the project, right? Like, what were the questions there that we weren't trying to answer? We have hundreds of samples from different tissues, different ages, pregnancy states, um, sexes, and, and yeah, as I, as I told you, like, we were able to to answer these questions and first understand what were the questions and then answer them. Um, as part of the analysis for this project, um, the first thing was to explore the data, right? And uh, because it was quite new for me, I did an extensive exploration of uh, the RNA seq data, the quality control metrics, and also um, the variables, right? At the sample level. Um, and this became like, um, I would say one of my favorite parts of analyzing data, uh, being able to actually look if everything is correct with our data sets and remove what's not, or at least try to identify it and um, make decisions based on that. And actually these slides that I'm presenting here are part of my very first presentation of the project or the first updates. And I find it quite, quite, Funny that I feel like my ggplot skills have improved a lot compared to these box plots. Um, then it was differential gene expression analysis. There, 
I also learned a lot, right? Because for this project, we have many different samples of analysis. So I had to do like a lot of plots and understand many things here. And um, yeah, that, that's what I have this uh, many plots in this slide. So uh, I think my internship was, um, I don't really remember, like two months or three. And um, it ended in 2022. Um, but then Leo proposed me to join the team as a remote research intern, working like 10 hours a week. So I decided to, to accept because I really enjoy working on this project. I was learning a lot and it was very exciting for me to actually be involved um, in a real project, right? So, you know, basically regarding this project, all this time that I've been a remote, remote intern, I completed the analysis and we added some other analyses. For instance, um, I started working with human data and other results from GSS. So it was also quite an experience to take the data, contact by email the authors to get data sets, um, to format them like they were in very different formats and then incorporate those results with mine to compare. Um, also, I've been working on refining plots once we have completed the analysis, which ones we want to include, and then refine some of them in preferred figures. And also, as I will show later, like I've been involved in reading about um, the biology side and also interpreting the results. Um, then uh, last year, Leo invited me to to teach in this bioinformatics course, he actually, um, in which I met Leo, you know, formally. And there, this, this was my first experience teaching about RNA-seq analysis. This is um, in Mexico. And uh, I realized there that I really like to, to teach and present my, my research, my results, and also what I have gained in terms of experience and knowledge to other student, students, particularly in Mexico. Um, he also invited me this this year to this course. It was online, so it was not in 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 my undergrad in my university. Um, then we had the Bioconductor Annual Conference last year in August. Um, so here I presented like three different talks. Uh, one was about a smoky mouse package that we created, then a birds of a feather, and then a long workshop. Honestly, I have to say that when, when Leo first proposed me to, to attend this Bioconductor Annual Conference, uh, it seemed very far from, you know, like a little bit impossible as I didn't even have the U.S. visa or um, I didn't finish the smoking mouse analysis at that time. So creating a package was also like a huge thing for me. So I told you like, yeah, sure. But honestly, I didn't feel like that was actually happening. Um, but um. But you know, I started with the small steps and then I started tramiting the visa. I got the visa after a second try. So many things happened in the way, but in the end we were able to attend and that was an incredible experience as well. Uh, so I presented this Smoky Mouse package Leo helped me to create. And, and also presented like uh, a short talk about what was the research about. Then we also, uh, together with Brunel, we presented a Birds of a Feather. Um, about the, the scope of the bioconductor project in bioinformatics in Latin America, in particular in Mexico, and also some of the challenges there you know, and uh, the current situation and some opportunities and alternatives that have been developed and such as different organizations that aim to teach in Mexico, for instance. So we also have like a very fruitful discussion here with other I think there were some Brazilians and other Mexican researchers at this conference. Then we also presented this um, long speakeasy workshop in which Nick um, talked about how to use a speakeasy and I talked a little bit more about the differential expression analysis part. Um, I remember um, this was a, a long workshop, but very few people were there. But you know, I found this material we created for this conference quite useful for teaching purposes. This is actually what I've been using to teach in my undergrad program, at least this year, because um, it's, I think, a, a good resource to simplify like some analysis that can be done. Then uh, last year we had the invitation 
uh, by Leo to this course at Cosmic Harbor Laboratory. It was about a statistical analysis of genome scan data. So um, basically there I teach about RNA seq analysis, particularly about exploratory data analysis. And I also learned a lot. So it was also a good experience for me. And also I have to say that this event in particular, it really helped me to gain more self-confidence when I was presenting and talking about um, analysis, right? And transcriptomic analysis. Okay, so that's um, the first part and for, you know, related with the Smoking Mouse project. Then I was also involved in the fentanyl drug project with Dr. Kristen and Ege. And this was another Paul Carney's data project, um, basically also differential gene expression analysis. Um, I think I was involved in this project since 2023, beginning of last year. And again, you know, in, that involved like really understanding what the study design, the objectives of the of this project and uh, exploring the samples that I have and, and all that. Uh, with this project, we're almost done with the analysis. And actually uh, last month I was in a conference with uh, a meeting with Ege. So we presented a, a poster about this work. I have to say, I didn't, to this posture, but it was my very first time presenting a posture. So it was also a new experience for me. Um, uh, I got to know the, you know, the dynamics of how is it to present or approach all the researchers that are presenting there. I also learned about the, you know, um, this um, drug abuse disorders and different approaches there that are quite specific, but it was also an interesting experience. And then we have writing and more writing. So currently I'm working on um, completing the manuscript for the Smoking Mouse project um, together with Leo, uh, Carrie, and also for the fentanyl uh, part, at least writing the methods for the bioinformatic analysis. And I have to say this has not been um, an easy task, but you know, I've learned so many things. Um, I have improved my my reading and writing skills, and also I've learned very quite useful tools such as uh, SciWheel, Cross Reference, OneDrive. You know, for citation to, to to have the order of the images, figures, supplementary material, and and yeah, I think this is something that I will also keep in my repertoire of of tools, and I actually have implemented these tools uh, back in another project in, in Sweden, Sweden last year. Um, I also started working on a manuscript and I started implementing these tools that other researchers were not using. So uh, there I realized how important it is, how important is, these uh, tools are and how, it, how complicated it is to work without them. So, yeah. And also I have to say that it was not just the writing part, but also, you know, working with Adobe Illustrator to refine figures, to edit figures. So it has been in terms of work, but I have learned many things. And then we have the interpretation part that is another story, right? Um, it's not just uh, writing the methods and all that, but also trying to interpret the results. So I have been found myself in the need of representing my previous notes uh, from my cell biology classes and also many articles trying to give um an interpretation of my results and to create like a story, right? So it has also been a lot of um, learning also in, in biology. Then we have the human DLPFC deconvolution project. So um, Leo and Luis they invited me to, to collaborate with some supplementary analyses for this deconvolution project and um, this was also a very enriching experience because uh, so far I, I had only worked with bulk and C differential gene expression analysis. And being involved in this project helped me to understand better about the convolution analysis and type of things we're trying to understand there. So this was a very complete project that I really enjoyed reading and participating. And they already have a preprint 
for these projects. So this was my very first um, uh, project, at least as a co-authors, and I was very happy about it. So thank you. Um, and also during these last months, I think six months maybe, Bio uh, has been had been teaching me about it, training me on spatial transcriptomics. So I was supposed to be leading this project of autism spectrum disorder um, in uh, working with the human DLPFC, trying to understand if there were like spatial signatures in these patients and for genotypical control donors. Um, now I'm, I know that Nick is working on this and I'm sure he will do a great job. So there I, I was just taking, you know, like personal notes about my training, about it, because it was like a very different thing, right? From transcriptomic analysis with bulk. Um, so yeah, I was just trying to understand a little bit better about the spatial experiment objects, how the space ranger works, and also like starting from gaining more knowledge about the BSIM technology what we have there, how to build these objects, et cetera. So even though I'm not working on this anymore, um, I have to say that the, the things that I learned so far um, helped me to, to know that I wanna work with spatial transcriptomic analysis in, in the future. So yeah, it was, um, it was also helpful for me. I, I really like it. And last week, actually, um, um, Elisa and I, we, we attended, again, this course at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory this year, same statistical analysis genome, genome scale data course. So there was more teaching and also more learning. And in, in this this time, it was also, again, because of the invitation by Leo, I, I teach more about RNA seq analysis as well, but focus more uh, focusing more on the Lima boom pipelines, like specific pil pipelines for differential gene expression assessment, and also a little bit of spatial transcriptomic. And I also learned a lot from other researchers and instructors from this course. So, you know, this year I was also as a teaching assistant with Leo, but I felt myself more like a student. I, I really sat down and pay attention and really learned a lot. So. I feel like I, I really leveraged this opportunity. Uh, what else I learned, right? So I feel like I really improved my communication and teamwork skills. So this may seem like quite a trivial, but you know, compared to me two years ago, I feel like I feel much more confident asking for help and and having meetings with people. I remember that when I first entered to this lab in, in my summer internship two years ago, when I had questions about the smoke and mouse project, um, I asked directly Leo you know, or direct chatting in Slack. And he was also always telling me, you have to ask this on the project channel, right? So that other people can um, comment on your questions or solve something or help. And yeah, so I think that really improved to me. And I also feel much more better asking for help via Zoom or uh, with personal one-to-one -one sessions or just on Slack. Um, what else? So we have um, documentation, the producibility and availability on the analysis. And I, f I think this is one of the biggest um, learnings or lessons I gained from working with you. Uh, because you know, when I was in my undergrads, uh, I know they, they gave us, I think it was like a whole model um, about GitHub. And I, I need, I got the idea, but I, did really, I didn't really understood what was, it, what was it so important to be actually taught in the whole model of my semester until I started working with real data, with a lot of samples, with many scripts, with many plots and, and all that, right? So there I understood how important it is to document properly the analysis to make them reproducible, you know, like just adding this piece of information and also report like the specific versions of the packages, uh, software tools and all that. Um, just thinking about like, if you were another person trying to replicate your results and or in the future, if you wanna go back to what you did, understand what you did again and all that. And also availability, like cutting the section of code availability, data availability, I found it quite 
useful. And I feel like I have already started implementing this to my own analysis back in Sweden in this project I've been working in, working on. Um, you know, it was quite a surprising for me to realize that uh, they are not really documenting their analysis or scripts. They do not really report like all the versions. They don't really make their analysis reproducible. And I also propose like having this code availability section and tell them like, no, we don't need that. But in the end, we actually include it because um, people ask for it. So um, there, I, I really propose to really start using GitHub and I really feel like I, re I already caused a change in them because they saw like how useful it is and how important it is. And that was um, actually thank you because of you, right? And And this is something that I will definitely still implementing in the future and inviting other people I work with to to work in this way. Then we have uh, project organizations um, taking notes about our meetings and also time planification. So um, I also know that not all labs have like these Slack channels for each specific project that I found quite useful, for, you know, like with all the members that are participating or involved and also taking notes after each meeting. I didn't really um, realize how, how important it is until I was talking with other researchers and classmates. And they were telling me that usually their PIs or like lab supervisors, they tend to forget like what they told them before, like the decisions they made in past meetings. So it was like very repetitive or it, they were also they have these discussions with them because of that. So in, at that moment, I realized like, I actually, we actually have notes, right? So we report like everything we discussed and all that also for other people to know. So I will also still doing this. And also time planification, having these schedules and, and calendars, it also helped me to planify my, my time and my tasks. Then something that Leo always um, encourages to do is to self-promote ourselves, to keep attending events, conferences, and networking. So I have also improved in that way, you know, um, with my GitHub page, with my Twitter. So um, it was until I met Leo actually, and all my classmates back in my undergrad program that we created a, a word on a GitHub page um, when Leo was teaching it in this program, in this bioinformatics course. Then for Twitter, you know, I used to use Twitter just for gossip or things like that, and now it became my academic account. And I started attending events that I found like important to do, you know, to to keep uh, updated and research technology, research, um, recent technology, sorry, and also create a context that is not easy sometimes. Uh, I'm still working on that, but I do realize how important it is. And another lesson I've gained working here is that it is important to work hard for sure, but also to have fun. So, you know, when attending these conferences abroad in different countries and touristic places, I have also to, to be taking the opportunity to, to have fun, to meet people and to relax a little bit, to take time for me. Uh, so briefly, I will just summarize my experience here with you as um, having an incredible team collaboration. I gained much knowledge, experiences, and I also had lots of fun. So I just want to say thank you to all of you because nothing of what I showed before will have been possible without or all of your help. You know, like even just answering like the small questions on, on Slack or help me debugging something with the name of a function or giving me, providing me like your code to create a plot or for an analysis with your sessions, guidance sessions, and of course with Leo offering a lot of these opportunities. So yeah, thank you very much.